In the wake of all of this violence, French people have woken up to grief and also to a sense, a new sense of tension and vigilance. Natasha Fata joins us now with the updates on the security situation in France right now. So, Natasha, what are the security measures that have been in place? We heard now, uh, we heard uh, Natasha there speaking about how the police were telling them not to gather, to dissipate, uh, to, to disperse. They don't want to see large groupings of people. That's right, Andrew. Certainly listening to Nala, it seems that the state of emergency that has been put into place is being enforced in a very gentle way right now. But we do want to break down for people so that you understand what it means for France to be under a state of emergency technically and what it means in practicality. So uh, this affords the federal government, specifically the president and the military, extraordinary powers. They can tell people when and where they can gather, if they can gather at all. They can conduct uh, house to house, building to building um, uh, sort of raids, I suppose is the best way to put it. They can search people's homes. They can go in. They can shut businesses down, ask people to not run their businesses. It also allows for the state to a sensor material that is being distributed, including online, and it really does give the military considerable powers over civilian uh, realms. So that is what it means constitutionally, but in practical terms, what it has meant is that the Interior Ministry has now deployed 1,500 soldiers really to take control of the city of Paris and offer a degree of security really throughout France. It also means that every police officer is on call. Every member of emergency services, doctor, medical aid personnel, has to be available at all times because, of course, remember, there are still close to 100 people in critical condition as a result of last night's terror attacks. So all of that taking place. Nala mentioned this uh, idea of certain neighborhoods being shut down, maybe having a lockdown. That is certainly within uh, the parameters of the state of emergency, but all of these details are still ironing out. So you get that sense that they're doing it gently. They're allowing people to move around, but they might have to limit some of that movement, Andrew. And you can tell that there is tension, you know, just as we've been speaking, there are reports that a that a French bound airliner was grounded in at the Amsterdam airport after receiving a, a threatening tweet and this is according to Dutch authorities so obviously this is an unfolding situation with many different elements so we know though that France is under a high alert right now but security levels have been elevated since last January when the offices of uh, Charlie Hebdo were attacked so what's changed so here's the critical question that will be posed again and again. How could this happen in France again? And how so soon after those Charlie Hebdo attacks, when so many precautions have been put into place? We know that the federal government of France uh, utilized $990 million to prevent attacks like what we have seen last night in Paris. They have deployed... 2,000 personnel all across the country to crack down on jihadism, on Islamist extremism, any kind of political terrorism, find out who is operating in the country and why and how to stop it. They have also said, this was still in January of this year, after the Charlie Hebdo attacks, that they have been able to uh, notify 3,000 individuals to the federal authorities saying that these are individuals that we believe might have terrorist links, jihadi links. We are watching them. We are doing surveillance. So that's on a grand scale, Andrew, on a more day-to-day -day level, schools, public schools have checks of bags. When you're going in and out of a department store, the department store can look through your bags. We also have guarded patrols of bus routes. We also have it at trains, uh, at train stations all across France. All of these measures to offer a sense of protection for the people of France, particularly the people of Paris. So you can certainly imagine that in the days ahead, people will say, when you had all of these resources, when you put all of this effort into it, how could this happen last night? So certainly uh, the mm -hmm. government will be having to answer that yeah, as well. Yeah, well, that's one of the very important questions that people are asking uh, today and they were asking last night. Natasha, thank you.